Welcome everybody. So this time I'm going to show a bit on how uh, uh, you can scale Udo. Of course, you can do it in several ways, but the base fundamental is that you can you have to have several Udo servers and one load balancer. And of course, you can also scale the Postgres uh, database server, but that would be another topic. And that would be, of course, uh, also possible using RDS or some other cloud system. But right now I'm focusing into do and the basics of, let's say, the fundamentals of what uh, you need to understand when you're going to load balance to do. So let's get started. So I prepared a small file and I have a Docker Compose file. And this Docker Compose, I have a Redis system. Why? Because I need to offload the sessions. Usually, if you're, if you're, Udo will store the, the sessions in a file, in a, in a folder. That folder needs to be shared between all the servers. So if you have server one, server two, server three, and so on, you need to have the same folder where you're going to share it. That folder needs to be an amount that is shared between several servers. And of course, now I'm using Docker just to show how it works. But in a real scenario, you probably will have big machines serving Udo and load balancing them. You'll need to have those. Uh, you'll be limited by the write speed of those shares, which usually are network based and they are not so fast uh, and they are going to delay your deployment, right? So that's why you're using Redis. I'm using a module uh, which is called Session Redis. I took it from a community uh, partner I'll show later. Uh, then I have an Nginx. This Nginx will be the load balancer. And I have database, which is Postgres, Udo 1, and then you have Udo 2. Okay. And I also have a Udo cron. This one will not serve web. It will have only cron scheduler and these other ones, they will not have a cron scheduler. Why? Because I created a conf file where I'm saying max cron thread zero. So by default, any server that loads this file will not start cron. Okay. I do this because I don't want to mix things. I want to know uh, why a server is slow and I don't want to rely on uh, mixing the cron workloads with the web workloads, okay? But again, as I told you, this is just a way to show it on a Docker Compose file. It's not a production ready Docker Compose file. I, I mean, it could be, but I, I never used it for production, just for uh, learning. So right now I have a second one, which is called Docker Compose init. This Docker Compose init, it has a container that will only run the first time. And that's on purpose so that when I run, I have to provision the database. So if I just start the server, we'll do, we do, will not provision one database. And that's why I want to have it. Okay. So in this Docker Compose file, which I'm going to start just the beginning, we'll use the same mounts. So you'll see database home, it's based on the same mount that will be on the other file. So when I start the database, it will be used for the second file, the same database. And I have Udo Home, Udo Extra, Extra. And so these folders will keep the same context. It's important to understand that using uh, an image, we will have exactly the same code on both containers. If you want to use uh, uh, different servers, you will also need to share all the code base and also the data folder. The data folder, you have the file store and you have the sessions. And if you use different, uh, if you use different mounts, so this should all be on the shared mount, both the extra add-ons, well, let's say just any code, the code base, enterprise code, and also the, 
the add-ons folder because if you don't have them on the same mount what happens is that the asset files they will have different ashes and Udo, when he detects a certain file has a different ash is going to generate a new asset file because he saves css and uh, xmls and other files that will be used as an asset for the web application they will be stored on the file store and how do does it is that he's going to check the hash and if if there's something new if the file was changed he's going to regenerate it this is a common mistake and people don't uh, don't uh, remember they have to do it and what happens is that they're going to get this problem Udo will be constantly generating is going to consume the resources of the machine so right now uh what will happen i have these bin folders later on i'll share the code somewhere on github probably but i have this first one that does docker compose up uh sorry docker compose down and remove all volumes and remove orphan containers it cleans everything right then the second one will build and we'll use uh, the second file the initial file so this one will provision the database then we will wait on the init container to stop and after it stops it means that the database was provisioned then we are going to uh, start the instances we're going to do a gawker compose up this means it not use it will not use the init file it will use this one and it will remove the that container the one that it's moving on uh, uh, udo underscore in it so let's see how it uh, how it works so i'll just dot pin and then uh, init db i'll start okay it's going to build the image create the volumes everything everything that is required to start and there you see starting with doing it which is the provision container if i just do this and i do docker compose uh, compose uh, logs you can see what is happening so there's the database redis so it seems it's already stopped the first one yeah so it stopped Udo uh, init. Now we started the other containers Udo cron, Redis, Udo replica one, Udo replica two, and nginx. So there you go. Now you see replica one and replica two. They are replying. So let's. I'm using nginx to serve it. So if I just do localhost here, you'll see nginx replying to the requests and the replica one replica to serving the request and we use admin admin <clears throat> there we go you can now let's install some module sales for example so replica 2 was answering to this request and so replica 2 is handling the installation of this module and when it's done It will stop or it will just go back to what it was doing which is serving the the ICO Dukran jumping in from time to time you can have different settings for Dukran uh, you might want to have different timeouts and that's also a good asset so that you can you can uh, separate the execution of the cron from the execution of the server you might want to have different timeouts for the for the workers and Udo kind of mixes some of those timeouts so it's always a good thing to do it there you have replica one and replica two answering and there we go so now if we just default to the usual web you'll see nginx replica one and replica two how does that work if you go into nginx here you'll see we're using this default template so this is a little balancing part i'm using the least con approach so this is the this is the strategy 
you could use IP, you could use uh, round robin. Uh, there are different strategies. Some of them work better than others, depending on the scenario. For example, if you use IP and you have everybody behind a, a, well, in one access point, one only IP, for example, a branch office, everybody will come from that IP. Suppose you have lots of people there. So that might not be a good approach because we do, uh, let's say Nginx, we'll always see the same IP and is going always to serve with the same IP. So we are serving 8072. This is the long pulling port. And here, and Udo and long, right? We are serving 8069. This is the HTTP port. Uh, then you have the headers. This is for the static locations. You should also add some cache here, specific settings for the cache. Long pooling is going to be served by the second upstream and the usual uh, redirection to do for slash. And, and yeah, that's it. That's how it works. And uh, then I have some other things you can do. So like, for example, you can, if you want to stop, you just use Docker down. If you want to start, you will use up minus T. It's going to start as a daemon. And this will trigger uh, the rebuild. Uh, then to update. So if you want to run a, a, an update command, you're going to update all modules. What you need to do is this one to rebuild. Then you stop Udo 1 and Udo 2 because these are serving web. And if you don't stop them, you might have, let's say it's more probable, that it's, there's a big probability of having locks, database locks, because they could be writing and you could be writing with your update all command. So yeah, it's a good approach just to stop them, run the update with Udukron, because uh, that's not going to interfere in what we are doing, right? And then you just do a restart, which will default everything to what you find in Docker Compose. So if we do that update, let's see what, what happens. So just closing here, I can do it here. Uh, update, let's suppose I change something in those files. I'll do the update. It's updating, database name is Udo14. And then when it ends the update, it will stop gracefully. Currently, we are using the Redis module. I can show you it is working. I have here on the readme file how to check that. So if we just do docker exec redis and run redis cli. So this hasn't stopped. Let's wait a bit. You'll see as we are doing this, the server is down because we stopped the replicas. Okay, now it's restarting the replicas. And we'll do cron and ready, so refresh. There you go, it's serving again and the server is updated. So now let's do Redis CLI. Uh, we open the Redis CLI and now we can yeah check the keys, so just do keys. There you go. There's the session. And if you want to see, we can do get and then the session ID. You have to put anything here. The ID of the key. And saying, yeah, where I come from and logging in as admin. So we can see that the session data here. There you go. That's the token. 
and yeah that's it guys I just wanted to show uh, the fundamentals of uh, load balancing Hadoop and that's it for now thank you have a great one bye bye